Mina san, Ohio Country Oyasumi. I'm Iris, and today we are watching the last of episode two of Exandria the Calamity series. Holy crap, last episode or last video, um, we had all this information on Vespin, you know, that he basically told everybody that he was going to, well, not that he was going to, but it was, you know, possible for someone else to do this ritual if it has been done before and that they should take the betrayer god's powers instead of the prime deities um it seems that loris and what's her name dean hollow sh they both knew him and knew about the tree of names knew about um him being for this ritual that he wants to do this ritual that he thinks is plausible so um we had all the craziness with her trying to take the dean trying to kill people at the party it's, it's just a whole bunch of crap going on um i do want to say for those who love d20 as well have you guys seen um the ravening war episode it was really good um i had decided not to i was going to do um episodes just like this but i realized that it's members only and i'm not sure if it's copyright stuff but i feel like it will be disrespectful to fully post stuff that they are asking people to um pay for so i don't really have the time to edit it down like i would other things like long format i feel like it would be too much on me so i'm down for hearing what you guys think of it um i really loved it seeing brendan so excited for you know the dive into his war and um matt is doing a very good job uh the behind the scenes video as well if you didn't see the behind the scenes video watch that one too um but yeah let's just get right into this episode We moved from here to the Magisterium. Um, uh, you arrive in the Magisterium. Um, uh, uh, as you arrive, you walk through vast doors leading to grand sweeping double staircases that go up to a massive parliament, a circular structure of various thrones. Ooh, the thrones super uh, fancy all here. the high thrones, the eight thrones. You see there is the seventh throne of uh, Grisaria Lucerid, and there is the throne of the fourth, which is Micah Cormorant's throne. It is dark as well here in the Magisterium as you approach. Uh, the private offices of the Magisters, again, of which there are 380, it is a massive, massive chamber. Uh, the building 380? Is complex. Um, where would you travel as you arrive at the Magisterium, Patia and Laren? Uh... Laren is caught just a moment uh, with, like, envy and contempt that the Court of Workings is, like, four people in a sweat box, and there's 380 assholes that get very little done, and this place slaps, and she's mad, and has forgotten temporarily why she's here. Inefficiency is the game. It's all about the pageantry. Yeah. yeah. <sighs> Cormorant, we need to find... I... We need to f talk to him. Figure out what's going on. Yes. But I also Foolishness. need to find out That's any going information on. I can on the construction and purpose of the Arboreal Calyx. It's siphoning energy, and I don't know why. And I don't like when I don't know things. Hmm. As I walk, you can just hear, like, Pacia's heeled boots that she has on just echo they don't have no information in some type step. of restricted area like mm. the fact that Sarah knows it the question is do we just seems like it's not right up to his office super duper top secret the magisters or is there a more strategic approach here from what we know from you know you just gotta walk in here much more of a threat. So I would caution. We should be stealthy. 
I don't think this is a conversation. No, it's not. Do we see any signs of life? Any lanterns lit? Any noise? Any holes? Not in the chamber. You approach the offices, walk by the marble staircase. Clack, 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 clack. You see Magister Cormoran's office. Doors closed. You see door of beautiful, polished, deep red wood with a bright gold knob and a placard that gives the name and station Magister Micah Cormorant of the fourth throne. The door is shut. You see any lights on, any shadows? You see no lights on inside. Nothing? Nothing. Louis dressed. <laughs> He know Brennan is up to no good. So I open the door. <laughs> now, as you attempt to open the door, the door is locked. He's like, something about to happen. They about to just start firing on him immediately. Do the assembled wizards feel like being? I hate restraint. Do you happen to have a knock spell handy? I can do you one better. I summon constructs. What's the biggest, dumbest statue in here? It's mine now. <laughs> is she about to ramp through the whole? Sheesh. Um, a statue of a like spell knight behind you in the wall. <clears throat> we answer the call of the architect. Open the door. Ooh. <laughs> the door is blasted off its hinges uh, and scatters. Well, that's a way to uh... a darkened office. Um, I'm gonna need perception checks from each of you. Real quick, I just press the digitation and turn on all the lanterns. <laughs> yeah. Lights come on. Did you say perception? Mm -hmm. Oh God, my perception. I've got good perception. Fifteen total. Twenty-three. Uh, okay. Architect Arcane, as your uh, construct smashed the door in, you heard something in here. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Lou was like, I uh, knew it! Show yourself. Roll initiative. He's going to. Oh! <laughs> Roll initiative. Oh I knew it was a fight. Let's go. Let's go. Hold on. Let's do it. Here's the magister's office. Um, so cute. Uh, uh, here we go. Um, and now I have to grab a couple oh, more things. Uh, is Where's the mini Mulligan map? This is a wonderful Matt Mercer map. Oh. Oh. Matt and me hung out all morning this morning, and uh, uh, Matt is a true yes. wizard. Uh, uh, I can only say, Matt, thank you so so much, yes. and also Rick Perry, I miss you. Uh, yes. <laughs> Mercer, and that's okay. Matt Mercer! Matt Mercer. Um, okay. Um, it's a brand. <laughs> okay. It is wizard time. Uh, we have the beautiful Keisha oh, and Larry. Oh, look at that. You're so cute. Oh, my God. Put it under the camera yes. so I can see. Look at you! And your signature oh, purple. Yeah. Look at those. Together, we look like a blue raspberry pop tart. Oh, purple and teal. Yay! Okay. All right. Make Delicious. sure they have a construct. Yes, yes, yes. No, yes. They boy. need it. We're gonna get the big boy. Where's my, left, the my lovely boy. gentleman? Ah! Ah! Uh, here's our friend. Oh, look at him! He's great. Um, nice. uh, amazing. I love it. I love it. Ow. I mean, everyone I on the. The telepathic bond knows. Yes. Oh, they heard yeah, that. Yeah. I forgot I they were. I clocking that. And got okay. the sky on a Griffin. We are. That's all this crazy. <laughs> <laughs> I am. Oh, oh, yes. Just keep yeah. me like, should we land? No, we have to go. Okay. Holy yeah. crap. They can handle themselves. <laughs> it's cool. Um. Uh, yeah, that was 
find out. That was <laughs> nice job. So cool. Yeah. <laughs> Unbelievable. Oh, I love it. I, I, it feels so right in the Agent Arcanum game to roll initiative and throw a map down for, for two wizards know, in yeah. beautiful evening gowns. <laughs> coming in. <laughs> <The map's up. laughs> Champagne flew Champagne, by the way. Just walked into a room like a farmer. That's what happened to us. No. Right. Come on. Comment does that to me. Anxiety and adrenaline. Well, it is tough being separate. I'm like so scared. I know you guys are okay. I know you guys are okay. I just wish I was there to give you bardic or cast blood or anything. Um, oh, they want to protect them. You don't see anything right now. Um, we're gonna grab. Uh, uh, yeah, he uh, said they heard something, this right? Made of stone or metal? Uh, oh, this bad boy yes. here. Stone. 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 Metal. stone. 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 So you have your stuff there, yeah. and I assume you're holding concentration, correct? Uh, yes. Okay, copy that. So concentration, bada boom. Um, bada boom. amazing. Bada bing, bada. Um, what do we roll for initiative? <laughs> Eighteen. Eighteen for Patient. Forty-two. Five. Ooh. Did you say five? Yes. <laughs> he said, uh... <laughs> five? Uh, Eighteen for Patient, and then... Five. Five. Okay. Um, and your construct is acting directly after me. Copy that. Uh, so, uh, what's in there? Exactly. Yeah. I don't see an opponent. Mm -hmm. Unless the opponent... Is their own anxiety. Wow, they have to play themselves. The opponent is a calamity. <laughs> it's a cat that just knocks something over. <laughs> uh, so, first to act is going to be Patia. The door has exploded off. You've walked into uh, Magister Cormorant's office. There are table fireplaces. You see some teleportation daises here for, like, you know, porting around the city. Um, and, uh, you and, and there's some like papers with a chest in the corner, other documents are around. Um, but you are first to act as Laren says, show yourself. Nothing has happened yet, but you feel a crackling of arcane energy mm -hmm. and Laren's certainty that there is someone in this chamber. Do I sense a spell being cast? Uh, I think, yeah, I think that what you can, what you can sense is you feel the familiar rush of arcane energy. You feel a surge of something moving in the direction of conflict. Moving in the direction but of But they can't conflict. see. You're, but you have the jump on whoever's in here. So like a construct smashing a door across a room will certainly, you know, make whatever force is in here, but you cannot see anything at present. Okay, let me let me look at something. Mm. Mm. Mm -mm. <laughs> this one's a little bit, I'm going to let DM rule here. Yeah, go for it. Is this a situation where a counter spell would count? The ruling, on, I believe, counter spell yeah. is uh, you're attempting to interrupt a creature in the process of casting a spell. Uh, you need to be able to see it. You're attempting to interrupt a creature. I don't think you need to be able to see it. Shut up. Cool. That's why DM ruling here. Um, mm. I'm going to double check that because that's very important. I'm going to go to the full spell. There is nothing. No, no. no I'm just nervous. I know because it's too much. Why can't we see it? The lights is on. I think that you are in the clear. It does not. There's there's nothing. There's a range of sixty feet, but there is nothing here uh, that says you need Good. line of sight. So I just sense the direction that the energy is coming from mm -hmm. and, and crack my wrists and just dispel. It's almost like a little mental nuclear blast that pulses outward and kind of shields there in the night. Sorry, I have such bad news, and it's coming on behalf of Jeremy Crawford, who lets us know that yeah, counterspell requires you counterspell requires Sorry. you to see the spellcaster you're countering. Okay, uh, Dang. copy that. Instead... Thanks, Jeremy. Thank you, Jeremy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's Everything Germany. That's right. Germany. Germany requires sight. I thought I remembered it. It's not it's not in the script. It's in the it's in the portion of the player's handbook on Twitter. Um, so <laughs> yeah. it's not in the PHB, but yes. Um, so Okay, how about this in That sucks. Wait, wait, let me I'm sorry. Range. Okay, okay. 
If I can feel the direction that it's coming from, I'm assuming he must be invisible or something like that. This just is that's not like it doesn't make sense. They range. have to be. Can I dispel magic and try and blast him with dispel? I don't like your magic. I would like it to stop. Yeah. <laughs> Unfortunately, no. Choose one creature, object, or magical effect within range. So because he cannot detect okay. it. Okay. Um, Damn. What I will say. Okay. Bruh. Yes. So he just saying they gotta get I, hit first. I was going to say. Uh, there are ways for you to know where someone is without having to see them. Oh, he's sure. giving him a little Hello. hint. I mean, <laughs> I could always do yet another detect thoughts or detect magic. Oh, I got hose in the corner. <laughs> I'll detect magic. How about that? <laughs> Amazing. Um, uh, as this is happening, um, what is Pesha like like going through as you are in here? You're reaching down um, for, uh, hold on one second. Um, so, uh, amazing. You cast Detect Magic, boom. Um, I'm gonna say, because there is a spell specifically called Sea Invisibility, this is going to give you a direction, mm. right? Um, and actually, I'll go ahead and ask for a perception check here. Seeing visibility. Oh my god, my perception checks have been bad. Ten. Um, on a ten perception check, you cast detect magic. You can detect a powerful illusion in the room. You know that something is hidden in here. Um, you immediately get the feeling. Uh, this of is so it bad. Being <laughs> to the, like to your just... left, it is towards the left and left side of the room. Um as you feel in that direction. So, so can we uh, hit them? You feel something over there that is some kind of illusory presence, but you can't detect the exact square that it's on. Okay. Okay. Um, I just... My brain... Uh, Pitch's brain is moving a thousand miles a minute as I'm trying to clock everything, and I turn and I just shout to Laren, what side of the room? Laren, you act next. Oh, it doesn't go. Uh, question, and I'm assuming the answer is no. Is there any universe in which uh, our invisible foe is within 10 feet of this big boy? This invisible foe is not within 10 feet of this big boy. Totally fine. Um, then this is going to be a to whom it may concern. I'm going to cast Fireball. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You know what? If I have a direction, I know how to get a concentration. Right. Hell uh, 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 yeah, go ahead and roll damage. Or actually, uh, so sorry. Dex save against a 20. Damn. Amazing. 20? Level 14. Um, let me ask a question That's to you. Um, so, uh, you go ahead and drop a fireball. Um, mm -hmm. As you drop a fireball, you get hit with a counter spell. Oh. Uh, 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 your construct can go. Yeah, okay. Uh, and it's a high enough counter spell where it just kills the fireball. Well, fireballs are low. Right. This was technically upcast before. Oh, was it? Yeah. I'll go ahead and roll in that case. I'll be very fair minded. It's fine. Don't worry about it. No, 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 no. I'll go ahead and roll. Um, we'll, make, we'll leave it up to the dice. Uh, make a roll. <laughs> yeah, he just. Uh, hell yes. Came uh, after y'all live. Here we go. Um, mm -hmm. Okay. I'm gonna roll this in front of the board, actually, because I like that and it feels fun to me. Um, it feels fun to me to roll in front of the board. <laughs> like, yeah, you're having fun uh, right now. Here needs. Ooh, we love that for you. Oh, yeah. his little critical uh, roll. Our friend here needs an 11 or higher to overcome your fireball. Oh. Ten fails by one. Oh, it was almost on 12. Go ahead and roll damage. All right. You're going to be good. Still going to dead save. Yeah. Uh, Jesus. Good shit. Okay. Let's play. Yeah. Those are all real good. These are very good. Let's play a beautiful game. game. Let us play a beautiful game. <laughs> Is that correct? Yeah. 41 points. 41. 41. 
Good job! So the piss dude's gotta make a DC 20 constitution save? Yeah, no, but... Let's be fair, he still has to make the deck save to, like, not take half damage. Oh, he quite failed. Okay, so... Oh, dang. I had that one back here on that deck save. Dang. Okay, we're gonna roll again. This is a 19 or 20 on the die, or he drops concentration. 14. Not gonna get the job done. Um... Uh... You lay down uh, this fireball, uh, and Magister Micah Cormorant oh, hears. He's a uh, <laughs> his, uh, his, you see, he's, he has a bunch of incredible evoker arcana tech gear. As you deal, how much? 44? How much? 41. 41? Yeah, she Hachi. blasted Hachi. half his face Hachi. off. Hachi. Uh, so, uh, uh, Pesha, you walk in. Uh, Clock the direction and they're like arcane. It's been a minute. Look, they think I'm just constantly holding concentration on stuff that keeps the city afloat. I get very mad. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> Ooh, um, uh, a perfect casting of fireball, uh, such that the the summoning of it it's 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 so spherical. What a round ball of fire! Technically perfect as everything Laren does is. <laughs> Uh, Magister appears horrifically burned and screaming as greater invisibility drops your construct may act unless you have a bonus action. Uh, oh god, what would bonus action be? Uh, no, that's fine. I feel They need to keep him alive that. so they could question uh, him though, I'm right? I'm have uh, my big boy move forward. That's so I'll talk about it supposed to move. Alright, as the construct goes up and makes two slam attacks. Uh, I'm gonna hit. Uh, 18. 18 yeah, definitely hits. He's already 19. burned his reaction on a counter spell. Cool. 18 and 19. Um, plus 4. What is a D8? Oh, God. So nice. 16. Plus 26 points of bludgeoning damage. Whoa, Sheesh. Yes. She's supposed to take this man's life. Uh, it's a D8 plus four plus a spell's level. Oh, Grim, 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 Grim. Yeah, her slam attack is this too. <laughs> Um, Magister Cormorant appears on the verge of casting Chain Lightning, and instead you burn him half to death, and your construct punches his chest so hard that it breaks all of his ribs. Oh my god! Uh, smashes his heart and organs into the wall behind him, and he is dead. Oh, oh sh- Laren, we That's couldn't even talk. Let's go! Oh my god! Yeah. I would have liked to ask him one, like, yeah. like yeah. something. Oh, <laughs> She's so hyped. <laughs> Paige was like, God damn. I don't have healing magic. I don't die there. Why don't we take him to Xerxes? Okay. Damn. I was like, oh, no. we need to ask him something. Uh, oh, no. Hey, problems are getting solved quick over here. Uh, That's a very nice map. Oh, shit. <laughs> yeah, we used it for a few minutes. We whole four episode <laughs> arc. Yeah, we just right. killed it. We're fine, we did it. <laughs> Um, I, 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 do, I jump over the um, our our walkies and I go. Hello, yes, Brasswing. Uh, Brasswing, you accidentally killed the Magister. Accident. Which Magister? Oh my gosh. Were you, were, you able, were you able to speak to him? Yeah, get meaningful information and. and Lay range just wings. That's what Zerxes is for. Zerxes. <laughs> Did you kill him or just knock him unconscious? No, he's dead. Okay. <laughs> right now, I gotta do some extra stuff. There we go. <laughs> Look, I think I was mending on his chest. <laughs> yeah, I blew that. <laughs> oh my gosh. Um, hey, uh, some fights are about verisimilitude. This was one shady evoker. Those guys have 66 hit points and an armor class of 15. And, uh, and an evoker? Anyone can cast fireball, bitch. Uh, 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 <laughs> special. Uh-huh. Um. Roll higher than a two on your initiative. And that's really the end of the story. That's really what it comes down to. Um, wow. Speaker of the Fourth. Yeah, Speaker of the Fourth means he was a representative for... Speaker of the House. Okay. Almost. Yeah, it, so there's eight magisterial. different people that represent, like, basically entire, like, magisterial bodies. He okay. represented the Fourth such oh, wow. body. Got it. Um, uh, so... Uh, Cormorant is dead. However, you're in his you're in his office. You're oh yeah, because see if he has um, anything in there. Construct stands guard. Yeah, he's investigating. Um, 
But there's plenty to go over here if you if you like. I still have that detect magic up. Ooh, <laughs> technically, so. Um. Oh, uh, detect magic. You you scan over. Uh, give me an arcana check with advantage Hi. with detect magic up. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. 29. Okay. Um, uh, 29. These uh, teleportation deuses in here have been tampered with. Um, <gasps> the seal has been broken on them uh, in terms of their registry with the Porter's Guild. So he's been doing it rogue off the record? Rogue off the record. Can I see where he's been teleporting to with these? Like, are they attuned to a certain place? You lean down uh, and see that there is a. Uh, bit of illusory magic, which I won't even make you use a full dispel magic. It's a, it's effortless for you to dispel to dispel it. Boom. Uh, one of the runes written in Draconic, which is a very classical, easy language to do arcane writing in, uh, is not Draconic. There's an infernal rune carved hastily into the dais, hidden by an illusion. Um, oh, jeez. And uh, you don't think he's been leaving? You think he's been inviting people in? Oh my gosh. I think we found our leak. Um, as you say this, go ahead. Uh, if you have any other investigations, if there's any other divination you want to cast, if you want to look at his documents, there's, uh, gonna, there's a bunch of stuff in here. I want to look for files. I'm looking for Let him um, into the magic yeah. stereo. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. of all the places for entry. Mm-hmm. It's bad here. That's, you you I have right. You, have, <laughs> you see, you hear Xerxes go through the comms again and just ask, so how dead is he? His whole chest dead? is gone. Um, Heart just third degree burns splattered. all over his body. It's yeah, about eighty yeah. percent, and um, his torso is completely crushed. Yeah. Okay. Well, is this, yeah. You have to forgive me. I assume the construct was not like, all right, let's just dig. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I didn't know. Yeah. Him. I yeah. tell you that. <laughs> I mean, if his mouth is still there, that's kind of all we need. Right? That's right. Grab the mouth, please. Oh, my gosh. Um, his okay. vital organs are yeah. against the wall. I want to... Cast any magic about it you want to cast, and give me any checks you want to give me. I'm going to make an investigation check. And that's going to be an amount. Yeah, okay. Uh, 22 to look for any files. I would love to say that I'm looking broadly about, like, Vespin and stuff. I'm looking for my stuff. Hell yeah. Um, looking, looking through the files here, what you see is that the stuff that Magister, the, the late Magister Cormorant was interested in was your stuff. You see he's already pulled history and records all about the Arboreal Calyx all about the Gautrashari, the Pact of Crown and Throne, all of that stuff's in his office already. And you can see that uh, there was research going on here. You see a lot of this is about magical law, so it's about the nature of the Pact. And you hmm. see there's a scroll pulled from the Librarium Magisterium, not your library. This is the Library of Magical Law. Um, and you see, you find a letter composed on ancient hundred year old birch bark. This was Maybe even from the original you know, pack? Like, well not the and, and you see the script is this like beautiful silvery the emi- um, birch bark. Um when they redid the, the pack for the freaking Cortez, tree of names. A conversation you you sort of can infer what it must be responding to. In effect, in many more words, the letter says, Honorable Magister, your assurances are taken in the most generous spirit possible. I do not distrust you, the person, for all people are children of Exandria. But... What I distrust is enchantment. The enchantment of a people and of their ways. Corruption. The wizards of Avalir have proven time and again that they do not see limitation. They do not see the limitation of a city that will be born aloft into the sky 
nor do they see risk. I wish that I could trust you. I wish that my order could trust you. I wish that we could, in good faith, tell you of the tree's purpose. Sorrow fills my heart, for even if you kept your word, the wizard behind you, if they knew the nature of right, the tree... Right, if you tell somebody... I can only imagine... Which is exactly what would happen. ...all that they could do with it and not what they could do for it. I implore you. The this endless is, skies of Alexandria uh, are yours. The wonders of your imagination are your only master. Please, simply tend for this. I feel like that kind of... Um, do not ask again. We cannot trust you with its secrets. I feel like that's kind of like Rin too, though. Like... Head Druid of the Galdrashari. I feel like she's just she's gonna be one of those people that tries uh, to use it for her benefit instead of trying to protect it. You just like what she did with the bow. Date this letter to she immediately the ran time with the it. The arboreal calyx was created. And you see records here that after the matron's ascension, basically the city landed a year after that, and the druids all came aboard Avalier and said, We need to update. <laughs> we need to we need to go and you find records here in this place prior to that the tree of names stood alone in the chamber of the calyx uh so was, was this their attempt to hide the tree the and just give it the other other bits of magic? history um having to do with Toramunda, having to do with old Mount Igora. You see there's like an ancient piece of ritual about the Emperor Rao Shan and the Empress Kamort, which are the, the primordials that the Dawn Father and the Wild Mother defeated at Mount Igora and sealed away. Um, you see like early Druidic like prayer scrolls essentially to like the, the ancient base of the mountain. Um, and uh, all of that is unveiled to you. And it's all here in Cormorant's office. With what time I have, I just uh, mage hand out all of these scrolls and you see kind of this similar silvery strand kind of sucking the text out of the scrolls, making a copy as it zips into my sphere. Just each one we come across, I'm copying and pasting. Hey, are you here trying to steal some scrolls? I think just the letter on the, the birch is like the only thing that Lyran would hold on to, and she is devastated. He wasn't worthy enough. He wasn't. But we are. Mm. See, I feel like they already about the foolishness. They have to be. It doesn't Our sound like they're trying to. Far exceeds. They're, they're gonna the try to use this for her experiment. You're right. Those who are privileged, those who are given everything, do not know how to fight. Give me one last uh, either investigation or arcana with advantage. Two is terrible. Two twice, so a twelve. Oh no! Copy that. No. Uh, <laughs> no. no. <laughs> Disgraceful. <laughs> um. Amazing. Cool. <laughs> um. <laughs> We are going to uh, uh, we are going to uh, depart from the Magisterium. You've found what you came to find. You have, and if you if you wish to like have this construct carry Cormorant's, but wrap up Cormorant's body in a rug and carry it behind you. You want this corpse? Mm. That's it's useful. Yeah. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Ask you some questions. Yeah. Yes. Did you like that? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I just been doing that because you guys been doing that. Yeah, that's the first half. You go, uh, there's nothing I can do for that guy. By the time I get there, he'll be too dead. Okay. Hmm. But we can take him to the Oracles, which is where we're heading. And if we get in and we find one, maybe they can raise him. Or speak we, with or him. Or speak with him. Yeah, I'm worried about the optics of walking with the body. I am also worried about the optics of yeah. walking with the body. Maybe we just sort of put them in a closet somewhere? Or? Yeah. Uh, you see that the construct wraps up the body and goes to hide it somewhere that you'll be able to come later in the evening. Okay. <laughs> um, it's hard. You can feel the palpable joy of a construct. You, lots of statues wait hundreds of years and never get woken up by the architect Arcane. And this guy's like, we did it, baby. Yes. <laughs> oh, day. Yes. Wizard woke me up. Um, I call them Scrabbles. Oh, oh my gosh. Oh, yeah. Um, you who? As we leave, I'm just like, hey, just um, remember, every magister sucks. I'm your only friend. <laughs> <laughs> um, we move to the Hall of Prophecy. We're flying there. Flying there. Yes. You have to get there quick. Um, um, the Hall of the Oracles. An order of clerics dedicated to accessing a connection to the divine without the use of gods. The oracles of this place long ago found a way of manifesting a connection to the divine, but their lives are challenging. They, they live partially in hermitage. It requires great preparation for one of the prophets here and to actually be able to deliver prophecy and divination to people. It takes a lot out of them. You arrive at this colossal marble building, Tempest, your griffin lands. You move inside. As you walk into the space, uh, you see a familiar friend of yours, Xerxes, uh, a young woman that you know, Sophira, uh, walk out. Um, you see that the doors close behind her, um, and you see there are a number of spell guard here, a number of like high arch sept guard here. Um, Spire steps out and says, I saw the approaching light of Tempest. Sarxus, it's good to see you, my friend. As it is good to see you. Guildmaster Okiro. Oracle. It is a pleasure and an honor. Um, it has been some time since last we saw you. I, I have uh, never taken offense. I've always taken you for a man comfortable writing his own fate. There is, uh, yes, very much so. Um, how can I be of assistance? The hall has been closed, I'm afraid. It has been. We wanted to inquire about the nature of your closing. Ah. We've been told that this is rather irregular. Is it not? Yes. Uh, um, so they I don't want to tell him. I'm paying attention to my hand. I don't like this pausing. <laughs> Excuse me. Only a 16. Um, well, let me do a deception check. Mm-hmm. You have to count that one. <clears throat> troubled. Very troubled. Uh, bloodshot eyes, this, this woman has been crying a lot. Sheesh. Uh, um, the, the guardians of the Arch Sept um, have been... Uh, spoken to, they've been asked by um, Loris of the Weaver's Mask to not allow any entrance. Uh, has he has he given you entrance to enter? Um, he has. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Give me the disabled <laughs> check. Oh, no. Yeah. Come on, man. Um, oh, 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 that's the extent of the lot. That's it. Yeah. He has. He's a dragon. How did you Deception? know? Deception. <laughs> <laughs> Twenty-six. Oh, okay. Mm. Oh, I guess, I guess. Um, she says, "Oh, um, 
incredible. Uh, the arch, you see the, 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 the warriors, the warriors behind say, uh, Blue Master, is, is this so you have been given leave to come? Of course. It, it is key to the replenishment and our aims. We are all in Congress around our shared goal, Loris, Xerxes, myself. Um, even you know, even you know, Nidus, listen, man, you've been keeping 10,000 plates spinning, yeah. and even you are like, well, I'm way out on a limb on this one. I'm way the fuck out here on this one. <laughs> well, you like it. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> and he said, <laughs> he's my best friend. Uh, he actually said, and he said that I'm the best in magic he's ever seen. Oh my god! That's why he said we got here because he's like, y you gotta go check this out, my guy. You're the best. Uh, you're the best guy I know. Um, <laughs> so what you see on this, on this little deception is it's effectively. Uh, this shouldn't work. All you did, like, first of all, she said the thing you needed to say to get in, and then you repeated it, and they go, like, come in. And you see, even the warriors here, no insight necessary. Like, Xerxes, you look at the warriors here, uh, you, you monitor every group of warriors here. You know, these guys are the high sept guardians. They are powerful eldritch knights, all of them. This is, you know, like, this is, they're the real deal. They look Nervous and unfocused oh, as they gosh. stand guard here. Um, something is not right. You walk in with Sapphira, um, and she says, um, as, she, as we're walking in, I do want to communicate to Xerxes about she seems uh, distraught. I see uh, the eyes. Um, something. Uh, I'm going to, um, as, as we start to walk by, I'm going to slow down and kind of. Um, uh, Get closer to her and lean in, and um, I'm gonna tell her, uh, Sophia, we've known each other for a long time. We studied together many years ago. Uh, you can tell me anything. I want. <laughs> you can lie on me. Is there anything we should know? I suppose best you come with me. Why Everybody's reaction to that, like, oh, you can tell me anything. Framed in torchlight. Okay. Most places here glow with arcane alchemical light. This is lit by fire. Even in marble, this place is trying to attach to something primal. Disconnect from the ground. They're trying to reach through. Moving through this place, you feel almost a sense of fire flickering. It feels like you're walking underwater, almost, as it dapples the marble walls. There's something here where it echoes and feels full and empty at once, a contradiction. This place is more philosophical, more divine. It's very outside the normal, lucid, you know, environs of Avalir. So Pyro walks through. I, I'm very glad Loris sent you. He, he, his instructions were not very clear and there's just very few of us left um or left um, what happened to the other ones what do you mean to close the hall hey I, well he, he only took over he only took over yesterday um he, he stepped in um um he he stepped in after Felucia of the heart's emblem uh did they die or something yes she's uh Stepping down, I've heard. She, um, I get it. I, I'm just gonna kind of put a, a gentle hand on her shoulder and tell her, just to reassure her. It's one way of putting it. Oh, is she here? Bro, oh, what's left of her? She's left out of forever. <sighs> what caused that? And then Loris took over. She looks over. You see over near one of the teleportation daises that are like the inner the inner city, the ones you've been using to get around, um, you see that there is a scar of soot on the ground in a circle. You see? What? <laughs> no word. She, she looks and says, that's where she, that's where she broke her staff across her knee and renounced magic forever. Whoa. It has been a 
<laughs> she probably seen something uh, the Ring of Silver been doing. Uh, is there somewhere to sit nearby that I can, like, I'm just trying to put her more at ease. And what is the general of uh, people in a heart? Yes, it's, it is empty. And here it's the three of you, literally. Got it. This is a place that would normally be, like, a, an entry hall for people to come and wait and hear these, like, oracular visions and, yeah. you know, um... She, you go, I mean, the best you got is these little steps up on this teleportation dais. Uh-huh. So she goes and sits aside that, and you're looking at this, like, ring of soot where a mage sundered their own arcane focus, potentially. Right. But Lucia was a member of the Ring of Gold, one of the 14 apprentices. Mm. Um, she was, she was Loris's counterpart. Um, she said, um, about, um, about two weeks ago. When Vespin started his um, foolishness. About two weeks ago. Um, <sighs> there's no other way to put it. Um, oracles started going mad. They started seeing the calamity. They started going mad. One at first. Um, she's still here. Carwin, she, uh, she went first, and, and hard, she started, uh, speaking false prophecies, babbling, um, her, her oracular vision failed, um, and at first we attempted to heal her ourselves, healing is what we study here at the Hall of Prophecy, and we did our best to reach out to her. Everyone who tried to heal her went mad too. Oh um, my gosh. They're uh, seeing what, what they're supposed to see. Here. Why are they saying this yeah. false prophecies? <laughs> I, I wanna know. Here. We need to talk to somebody. Here. Um, about um, as we were over Gwisar, all traveling on our way to Dominus, um, we reached out we, we reached out um to the uh the octothurge at first and, and just asked if there was we reached out to um the chair of divination which is the closest the the, the school that we interact with the most uh and they immediately um conferred with uh the ring of gold um Volusia came and for the past little over a week was helping us try to understand this. Um, there were still enough of us who felt safe and whole, and we were able to perform our tasks, and then a few days ago, um, a few days ago, um, we thought Carwin might be well enough to uh, come back out, and we let her take a walk. And she turned to the other oracles and um Xerxes it's just me it's just me you're the last one yes oh my the rest gosh are, are being kept safe because they've all lost their minds safe from themselves what did um what was it exactly that caused Valeria to renounce magic I don't know. It was an argument she had with her contemporary. Laura. Laura's. Yes. So they were arguing. So I, she probably knew uh, they were uh, seeing uh, something a... accurate. Laura's probably uh, it. saying there's nothing they need to worry about or. 18. 18. Maybe you need to as well. Uh, probably. Admitted to what they're doing. No, almost there. It was almost a 20, but a 7. She says, I don't remember. They were, they were speaking to each other. All I remember her saying is, if these gifts harm us, then we should not accept them. Uh, uh, she, oh, she said that to Loris. Yes. And she, while she was working on 
what she came here to help you investigate. Was she keeping any notes anywhere? She was the most able to soothe Carwin, and and she, Carwin is is safe right now. She she is better than she was when we tried to have her come walk and, and rejoin us. Uh, Volusia worked on on creating a um, circle of runes that we've moved Carwin's bed into. She's she's able to speak. Um, I feel like they've seen but, what's really going to happen. Left, the fact that it happened two weeks ago. Before that, I remember we found Carwin in one of the bathing rooms. Um, I can take one of you there. Uh, it would be better if it's it's probably for the best if you don't both speak with Carwin. We found that it is much more helpful for there to just be one person in the room with her. Um, Let me go. I'll go. Uh, I'm going to think to the channel. Um, I'm just going to update everybody on what's happening and uh, I think that the business that I like we have is going to take a little while longer if you find that you have accomplished your tasks feel free to come and join us we could use some arcane eyes on these circles as well I'm going to put my awesome. arcane eyes to uh, the soot marks mm -hmm. um, give me an arcana check come on Liv here it is Come this on, is it. This is <sighs> take it 24? Mm -hmm. 24. Um, staff was, uh, you, you see it, the staff was sundered here. Um, she broke her staff, she broke her arcane focus. It would not have been a magical item, it would have just been a staff that she had been using as her arcane focus. Broke it and removed her ability to perform magic. Uh, there's no way emotionally to describe the weight of what you're seeing. It is, uh, uh, Pro especially for someone who loves magic as much as Nidus, it's probably nauseating to comprehend, to like, consider. Yeah. It's, yeah. yeah. Um, and telepathically, I just said across, is she still alive? No. We The Lucia uh, left Avalir. Left yes, Avalir. Avalir. Is that was alive. what we were told, so she is alive. What graphic? You what think? Is left. Right. No one yes. leaves Avalir. No one leaves Avalir. We have. Okay. Um, Hold on. We can leave. Just walk with you. Correct. That's okay. Yeah. Um, so you're, you're going to examine... Yeah, I'll stay in the okay. entry chamber, keep an eye out. Close to the thing. Um, you see that Sapphira leads you to Carwin's chamber. Um, you see um, that Sapphira looks and says, um, if there's anything else you'd like to look at, we can. I can show you the, the, the bathroom. Yeah. Yes, 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 yes. Okay. Um, Take a bath. Just fully <laughs> watch this woman have an emotional breakdown and be like, "This is too much." There's an Epsom salt in here. I swear, <laughs> this is too much. <laughs> um. Uh. I've had enough. You, uh, she takes you to the bathing chambers. Give me an investigation check. Something I'm not good at. Uh, and she, yeah, she, she takes you to Carwin's chamber. Yes. Oh! Thank God, a dirty 20. Yay! Ooh, a dirty 20 is great. Um, you walk in as Sophira is talking. Um, and you see that she starts saying, um, we brought... Carwin here, she was in good spirits. She she was even able to laugh a, a little. She she we told her that she had been delivering false prophecies, and she laughed and said, "Well, I suppose I'm as bad an oracle as I was a weaver's apprentice." And we laughed, and um, you know she and you look and see the mirrors over the sort of washing basins. It's a big crack in. Vespin. As soon as he said mirrors, I was like, um, uh, "We're going to go to the chamber with Carwin." As we, as we start walking, mm -hmm. I'm gonna I ask her, uh, "What sorts of prophecies was she?" Right. Why did they deem the everything false? Any, any names? Any any anything at all? 
I can go. I can go pull the. It was. It was written down. Everything she said was written down. So I can go pull that. Oh, we need I'll, that. I'll go grab it at once. And then she goes off with you to go look at the bathing chamber. You go into the room with uh, Carlin. You walk in, um, and you see a circle of white runes gathered around a. Small and humble bed, a wash basin, a small chest of clothes that have all kind of been collected in a bizarre sort of a room compressed, and then all the furniture that would be up against the walls instead compressed into the center of kind of a circle. Um, and you see, sleeping in the bed is a young. This woman, music is too dark stressful. Skin, curly dark hair. Sleep. She looks restful. Give me an insight check. Come on, baby. Ooh, 24. <laughs> what are they talking about down there? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh she, my gosh. For whatever it's worth to you, you were expecting to see someone ravaged by some affliction. Yeah. And she in her chilling. You see a strong, healthy looking woman deep in rest. Mm, I'm going to <laughs> I, I I'm gonna get closer. I wanna get a closer look and I wanna see what is um uh, I, you know it, it, They are all freaking out like he gonna get attacked. that's underneath it. I mean is she did they make a, like a magic circle or something? Yeah, around the magic circle around yes. the bed, yeah. Uh you is walk up to sing or anything? Um you walk in to look in the bed, nothing is pulsing. You see there's an object under the bed, though, kind of centered under the bed. Uh-huh. Uh, it's a small hand mirror. Another mirror. <laughs> Can't, what? Is it like... Is this how Vespin is, like, watching all these people? I'm, I'm gonna... See, I'm, I want to get a good look at it. Who would do that? I'm gonna walk around. Is somebody working? Was Loris there? Like, take a good look from every angle. Why is look there a mirror? See if there's any other mirrors. There's no mirrors are a thing now in this place. Which is true. And if I don't notice anything out of the ordinary, then I'm going to go to her, um, whatever side, maybe if she's sleeping on her side, I'm gonna go towards, uh, to the side of the bed that her face is um, facing. So it could be turned to me. Mm-hmm. And if I don't notice anything from that little walk around, I'm gonna very gently call her name. You do notice something in your walk around. Okay. As you right as you're moving through Or just like something's gonna here. jump why did the colors change? You what's going on? Walk around the corner of the bed Look at as you get beside the, oh gosh! As you get beside, everybody is stressed right now. Yeah, go for it. Divine sense. Yeah, oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it's like help. I may be in the room, uh, but help. So I reach out instinctively and I touch. Um, I have tucked inside of my armor. I pull out uh, uh, a stone, a necklace, and, and uh, there's two. One is a name stone. It's it's essentially. Uh, like a dog collar it's given to the first nights I have one that's mine and I have another one that's a Van Gren's that I kept with me I pull them both out and I hold them in my hands just because out of impulse safety and blanket type thing I activate divine sense from that the edge of the chamber on the far wall you walk around the headboard of the bed against again everything compressed into this magical circle. You look at the edge of the room. Illusory or not, there is a, uh, this place is, has like a lot of association with water. <gasps> a lot of water <laughs> feeling in this place. Oh my gosh, and You please. see there is a wall that has a stream of water pouring down it. Very slight, making almost no noise. That's reflective almost too. Almost like those slate fountains that just have a sheet of water coming down them. You look into it. You activate your divine sense. You've never detected 
anything fiendish before. Or at least, maybe you thought you did. But it was nothing compared to this. Oh my gosh. It was nothing compared to this. In the reflection of the bed in the wall of water coming down the dark <sighs> stone, lights reflecting, Carwin is not in the bed. You see a horned figure in red bleeding and dying in the bed. The last time you saw this figure was the size of a mountain. Oh my gosh. So did they replace all the oracles with these betrayer gods? Or is it just her? It doesn't appear able to. But you can only see it through the water. I'm approaching... Do you approach the wall or do you approach Carmen in the bed? Well, so, so. Oh the, my god. So this is like a. I, I didn't, my divine sense didn't ping the bed. I'm just seeing this be revealed. It pinged the wall. Oh, yes. Carmen has a slight celestial presence just due to being an oracle. The fiendish presence in the reflection overpowers everything. So, uh, is it in the room? <laughs> fuck. Is she really in the bed? <laughs> or is he in her body? What's going on? <laughs> that, uh, that water, where that ping came from. Uh, show yourself. Bruv, I can't move. I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't. Show yourself. Is that coming from the wall? Or coming it's from coming from the wall. It's coming from the reflection. Um, I am. <sighs> this is too much. I approach it. Sorry, sis. It you knows know his me. name. I know you well. Because it, it's been knowingly sent him visions. Uh, I'm walking towards that. Yeah. You have reached the wall. I put my hand on it. Does Xerxes want to go through? Oh my. He goes through. <laughs> you are in another time? Another time. Realm? This way, you put everybody. Everyone was insistent that <laughs> Oh my god, she's out there having a good time. I can't get the bottom of my feet. Uh you see, uh you walk through Silver Mist. A bed soaked with blood. You smell the smell of blood, but you see a wheezing, rasping devil. Same one. Same one. Now your size. Now the size of a man. <laughs> Sorry. I can't really die. So oh, you don't. I'm not in danger right now. It just hurts. That's all. What's happened to you? Yeah, that's the real question. Well, you came in before the Dawn Father could destroy it. So that was real? It's all been real. It's all been real. I get closer. <sighs> you know me. Then who are you? Sinner, most unclean. I am the Lord of the Hells. And I don't believe in gods. Lately, I don't much either. 
give me your hand. <clears throat> and he puts a blood soaked hand in your hand. Feels weak. Feels. I heal him. Ooh. I cast Kuyu. Sheer wounds on him. <sighs> Shall I roll it or does it matter? Uh, it removes him from the dying condition. It removes him from making death saves. Um, the Lord of Health. The Lord of Health? The name they gave you. Or the name you gave yourself. When you get to the table, and there's not much left but scraps, you take what you're given. Sheesh. Why are you here? I don't know. I don't know. I left where I was. And now I'm here. I'm I'm looking I'm scanning his so is this where, face and looking for Is this the betrayer uh, god that Vespin yeah. took powers from? Uh, like if you want let me know what you want to do. If you want to give me an insight check, you can. If you want to if you if you're just doing divine sense, he is registering as fiendish. Yeah. You. I I'm looking for The traces of, of, of what he's endured on his face, you know? Like, I'm expecting broken. And I feel like I'm just seeing hurt and bewildered. He seems hurt and bewildered. He... You know people well enough. Mm -hmm. Not everyone shows you how broken they are when they're first meeting you. I take his hand again, and I look him in the eyes, and I say, what have they done to you? Who specifically did something to him? I want to know everything. You look, and for the first time now that he is no longer writhing in pain, this man is beautiful. Why is everybody? It can be said. <laughs> oh shoot! To a man. Oh, why did you? What did you just say? What does that mean? Do that. I can't help but. So that's His why he was in the in the dream. <laughs> How I, did he? I don't look the same to everybody. Oh. Oh. What? They said before before it all went wrong, they said I was the most beautiful of them all. You were. But as well you know, beauty is in the eye of the beholder and so I sometimes <sighs> look like the most beautiful face that mortals have seen. So it's not actually his husband, but that's the face that <laughs> Sam. That's just the face he's he seeing. You looks at you and says, "A Vandrin." That's the name you just said. Yeah. That was your love. Yes, it was. Why do you remind me of him? Well, he said your mortals Only see the face that I they think is the most beautiful. To look like to people. <sighs> is this a trick? No, he told you. People often think I'm tricking them, and I never have anything to say to that. What can you it's say probably to, to get them, they them to trust him. To <sighs> That's something he can't control. It doesn't seem. I don't know if he can control it, but. It's to his advantage. No. I don't know of Andrin. Mm. But he must have been a very good man because uh, he's not in my realm. Oh, okay. That's reassuring. Everybody's all... <laughs> What? 
I've known only darkness for so long, and even before that, no one has shown me kindness. Aww. That's gonna change. Aww. And that's a damn shame. Um, this is your home. Don't you forget that. You belong here. <laughs> <laughs> sits up in the bed and and there are bedclothes here there's fabric if you wish to dress his wounds and yeah. clean him up you can I will do so with the utmost care um uh you do so with the the utmost care as you do so um he smiles he, he says well while you're Cleaning up a god of darkness and fire? Is there anything I can do to repay the favor? We, this is not Exandria yet. I don't know where I am, not where I was, but I'm not here in between. And you are coming, is that it? Someone has done something. Someone has broken you out of wherever you once were. The door opened. Yes, that's true. And you walk through it? Oh, the door opened more explosively than I can say. Hmm. It opened and we all oh. tumbled out. It was not it was not a kind place behind that door. And the for lack of a better word, pressure behind it was enormous. It was a place made to teach us a lesson. It was your punishment. Do you remember what you've done and why they sent you there? We came to a young world. We came to a world of raw elemental wonder of chaos and exultant passion of energy vaster and more potent than anything we had beheld in the cosmos we came here and we began to shape what we could what we dreamed the primordials the primordials were here when we arrived. It was their world first. Mm -hmm. We arrived and we began to shape. We offered our creations. I saw. Will you do something for me, please? Yes. Will you kneel with me? I will. I want to hear everything. He kneels with you. I cast ceremony. <laughs> you cast ceremony with him. Marriage. <laughs> you begin to cast atonement. As you begin to cast it, you see he looks, and I believe the casting time of, of ceremony is... Is an hour. Is an hour. You begin to cast atonement. Um... As you cast this spell, um, you focus in, he kneels with you and he says, we started to make our creations and I, I did as I, I thought I must. I, I, I was a celestial. I was a I was a celestial of, of light and and they they were creating truth and love and honor. They were creating courage and mortal beings. They, they were creating choices and and Many of the gods spoke first. 
Many of the gods spoke first and long, and it was a long time before I spoke, and much had already been said, and I thought to help. I had seen the gifts of love and courage and truth and honor and sacrifice, and I said, these are the greatest gifts we could create, and we must make them matter. And I said, these, these will matter because in their absence, we will know deceit. And in their absence, we will know betrayal. In the absence of love, there will be viciousness. I, I thought I was expanding on a creation. I thought I was making something that would make the earlier work more, more. And then years passed and time passed and the gifts I had made, mortals called them evil, said that they were wicked, said that they were wrong. And I said, well, yes, but that is the point, is it not? That, 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 and they... So they know the difference between... me and... What is good and what is not. prayers to my name. And I turned to my kin and my brethren and I... I said, does this strike you as fair? None of them spoke. None of them said a word in my defense. All were happy to watch as my gifts were not seen for what I intended them to be. And then the others decided to grant even more. It, many of us were already hated. Many of us already were seen as something worse, something abominable. But that, those stories, those things that shaped that, they were aided or egged on or pushed forward by the others. and. In that time of pain and sorrow, they then set forward and gave more gifts. They they gave magic, the primordials. Mm. They were giving the ability to shape reality to the things that they had used their ability to shape reality to shape. We had already lent on the hospitality of the primordials enough. We had lent on it enough. And we stepped in and said, the game has gone on too far. The primordials rose up against them and... And the prime deities, as they called themselves, stepped in to fight them, to double down on their overreach. Our promises were to the primordials, and we were called betrayers! I, I lay my hand on his chest. Easy. I've been burning for so long. So he made these evil they things to show what love and courage they is, do. and then nobody stood up for him. And I'm sorry for that. Like, what? How would you know what courage is if you have nothing to fight? I can help you. You say you know me. Yeah, what is that about? When the time comes and you step from this void into our world, don't you forget me. Don't you forget the kindness that we're capable of because we're your children too. We are made of the same stuff that what you initially created. We come from the same thing. And if you remember the stories as well as you seem to, then you know that at some point you turned your pain on us. They used you and then you used us uh. to get back at them. I have a son that's not of my blood, but that is my son. I met Evandrin when he was just an infant and I held that boy in my arms and I fell in love with him. I am his father, but he's not of my blood. And in that same way, we are your children. 
Please remember that. Don't take your pain out on us. Spare us. And I will help you. I will help you confront those that did this to you. The other gods? Huh? I don't get my word lightly. You have my word on this, Xerxes Ilarez. Not for all the ages of the world will I forget you. <laughs> you are not... I see faults in people. I know what they have done wrong. You want to know your fault, Xerxes? You are very trusting. You say that I am being used. You, my friend, are being used. Are you? I am the father of lies. You are being lied to. And not by any god. Uh-oh. I turn around and look back through the portal that I walked through. Um, as you begin to go back through the portal... I'm not moving just yet, I just turn around. <laughs> you turn to look. You see out there, you look back out through the, through the portal, um, your, you see your body um, is on the ground next to the bed and your eyes are rolled back in your head. You're, you're having a vision. You recognize like, oh, when I walk towards the water, that was me ejecting from my body. I'm, oh, you realize, wow. oh, I am an oracle. I am fully one of the people of this hall. Like this, this is me, right? Mm -hmm. um, uh, you see, he, look, you look out into the room. Who's lying see, to him? The Lord of the Hells goes, is that it out there? That's, that's the world. Yes, it is. Where? What part of Alexandria are we in? Maybe it's all changed since the last time I was there. I don't know. I want my dream. It's called Avalair. Avalair. Uh, Avalair. Flying over Dominus, yes? Yes. Is Dominus still beautiful? Parts of it, yes. Aspects of it. I always said, I, we're not, we're, we were supposed to take credit for it all equally. Dominus was my favorite. But I, was, <sighs> I always said, on the face of Exandria, Dominus was the smile. It truly is. It is. There is nothing like it. <laughs> Everybody's just like, uh... I have to leave you. I'm going back. What became of Evandrin? I don't quite know. Some sort of illness that was beyond my reach took him. The vision I had with you showed him walking towards a tree. There are some less than kind workings of magic on some trees of old. <sighs> he was spitting up something that became intangible and he I felt him sort of fading when I picked him up desperately trying to find some sort of a cure that was nowhere to be found it wasn't from 
anything from this world that I could understand. Nobody could help. Mm-mm-mm. Uh... Why was he in the dream? Yeah, that's the connection. His spirit was somehow near. I don't know how to describe it. Did you ever try after his passing to bring him back? I tried to stop it from happening. And I never found him, really, when he passed. But I did everything I could to stop it. Great and many are the powers of mortals to stop poisons, diseases, afflictions, and curses. I know. Nobody would help. That's crazy. I know that city had some way of bringing him back. Somebody knew something. Why wouldn't they help the why wouldn't Very they help their first night? You can trust. Very few. Like they wanted him to die. I don't know much. I have been away Sheesh. for quite some time. But of my domain, I am certain. I am the father of lies. And there are many lies in the city you call home. I don't call the city home. The Lord of the Hells feels the impact of that. He looks at you and you have done me a great service and you have given me your trust, but I understand that mortals will always have a part of their soul that recoils from me. It is the nature of the gifts I gave them. Then you made me wrong. <laughs> um, he puts a hand on your shoulder and interrupts your casting of atonement. And instead casts a spell on you and puts a protection from evil and good on you. Hmm. That will protect you from myself, from Celestials, from Fae. That's good. Thank you. You see, he... Uh, <laughs> uh, you see... <laughs> right, loquacious. I, I just want to... You see that... Uh, uh, he says, time for that will come later. And you have work in Exandria, in the mortal realm. I am trapped in a space in between. Something, there's a poison. There is a poison in your city. And I think you know the shape of it. The tree. I give him a nod. As it just innately just start to feel like my time here is mm. up. I start to step away from him and I walk towards the portal. Mm -hmm. And I, as I start to step through it, I turn around and I say to him, come find me. Uh, you walk through, you leave, you come back into your body on the floor with the tight muscles of someone who has been like spasming in a state of religious ecstasy and stand up out uh, in the chamber because that uh, you've, you have been occupied for a moment. Sophira approaches you. Um, Guildmaster uh, Nidus, um, this was the first. <laughs> this is fun. This is fun. <laughs> uh, the promise of the premise. Um, you see that uh, you uh, comes over and says, 
this was um, this was the first prophecy that Carmen gave around two weeks ago. We wrote it down. This was the first prophecy that was a, a false prophecy we, the, that we knew that she, she had gone mad. Okay, what is um, it? Tell us, tell us, tell us. <laughs> Do you do you have your uh, do you have a telecommunications device Shut next to you? Oh, uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and send this to you because I want you to read this. You want me to read it? I want you to read it. Let's go. Uh, I love it. Mm-hmm. <sighs> do I have a sense of how much time has passed? I feel like it's gonna be really bad. Oh, okay. So I want you okay. to read it for a minute. Okay. Um. Uh, <sighs> Okay. I feel like I need a cigarette that I don't smoke. Right. Um, this is about to be so, very bad. Um, Karma. Uh, so so fire up places this and says this was the first prophecy that that let us know that she was mad and and, and her <coughs> prophecy was false. Uh, CBS Pharmacy, Lou, remember to text OK to update your. <laughs> oh my gosh. Is this it? Uh, yeah, this yeah, is yeah, the one yeah, I just got. Um, get your booster shot. Get your booster shot. <laughs> Uh, no, it should be there. Uh, oh, I got it. You got it. Good, good, good. We'll fly to the council. <laughs> <laughs> the stars are leaving us. Our hands cannot reach. The limbs of the tree can no longer scribe the name of our deliverance. We will soon be as broken as our promises. Sheesh. Avalier shall fall. All shall fall. And from our folly will the hands that forged the world, banished themselves from the broken things they have made. The gods? This was so they're talking about the... Yes. Why is it false? Uh, As in you guys didn't want to believe it? To a member of the Octothurge. Um, and we, we delivered it and said, this is the prophecy. Um, and the, the, uh, Guildmaster of the Guild of Divination, um, uh, decreed that it was false. Uh, because it obviously can't be true. Yeah, so they're in denial or they're working with somebody who's telling them to say that it's false. Obviously. Is that, that was the right decision, wasn't it? Something went wrong. They all went mad. Yeah, because they know um, that everything is about to I think it fall. is best that we continue to consider that false. As in, we don't want to start a panic. Continue to. That is, that is false. I misspoke. Guildmaster, is everything all right? Yes, of course. Um... Um, I'm sure as soon as uh, Xerxes uh, leaves, we'll, um, we'll be on our way. Everything that Loras wanted us to take care of seems to have been handled. Xerxes begins to march up the corridor, and you see Nidus here. Um, it is uh, now, as you are all wrapping up your business, it's about 1 o'clock in the morning. Um, you get, uh, a, as you're leaving the magisterium, and you get a ping on your, um, uh, ring of masks, um, from Akami Ra, the, uh, helmswoman of Adelaide. Oh. Hold on. Can I fire it up and look off? Um, Akami, uh, Architect Arcane! Great news. We are in position over Kath Moira. All is well. We are now at the intersection of all three ley lines. And as of this moment, descent has begun. Hooray! Descent. Uh, well, no, nothing uh, of note to report. Uh, no, I don't think there's anything of note to report. Um, uh, the, uh, so, you know, uh, at this point, the entire process is uh, automated. Uh, this is, we've, we've begun the protocol, so the room's enchantment is working. Um, the, uh, the lay rudder 
I went to disactivate the lay rudder because we don't need it anymore, but there was a block that had your signature on it, so the lay rudder is still yeah. active. Yeah, uh, go ahead and leave that active. Uh, don't worry about it. It's pulling a, a minutia, a, a negligible amount of power. We're fine. This is good. Thank you. All right. Well, I'm going to stay here just in case. Obviously, the whole rest of the process is automated, but just in case anything. So I could call you when we... <laughs> no. Mask. Goes neutral. What? Uh, the fuck? Okay, a, a bad thing. Just we have to go to the. That's what I'm saying. She's now, gonna call you in now, case something bad uh, happens, and then something bad happens. Now. All right. Um, can I like portals? Um, you guys can assemble portals. Do you communicate that over? Um, yeah. Over the telepathic bond. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can this man talk to a, a god? You don't know yet that this man talked to a god. Well, then in that case, the helm is the most important thing. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so that gets communicated over the telepathic bond. Yeah, right. The Hell's woman was just attacked. We had meet now. Oh my uh, gosh. So, um, all of you, uh, uh, hear this and begin to sprint towards, uh, the helm. Uh, which is uh, uh, off in Dawn's Ledge. You head to the neighborhood of Dawn's Ledge. As you begin to convene on that, um, you know, flying, teleporting, moving in as fast as possible, uh, you begin to uh, move through the streets. Um, you begin to approach uh, the helm. You see the building um, up ahead of you. All of you convene again here in this moment. Um, you hear far up in Excelsior Plaza still. The, now the firework extravaganza is kind of dying down. Um, you see that you still hear revelry and applause. Um, and you can see, you feel the hum of now three ley lines converging in one. And the city is descending. You can feel, you actually see now clouds on the horizon, like slowly rising up as the city begins to descend. Um, you walk Oh, uh, this is going to be horrible. Um, I'm not ready. This neighborhood. Uh, and as you are walking, uh, you hear a voice speak out. Ah, the ring of brass. Uh, and Lycretia Hollow uh, turn, uh, looks at you. Uh, <laughs> says, she's, she's in front of us? Not just her. You look around at the rooftops around you. They surround it. Oh my god. And that's all for this episode of oh Unlimited Calamity. Tune in next week. Brennan. And we'll see you evil, evil person. We can all take turns causing the apocalypse exactly. together. Exactly. We all have yeah. Disney yeah. Parks crucifixion. I remember, is it Thursday? Yeah. Is it Thursday yet? <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, this is, it's Thursday now, but now it's your, it's going to be the next Thursday is the next show, and we want to know if it's Thursday yet. Yeah. Fuck. Yeah. <laughs> 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 So, um, there's a lot going on right now. It seems like Loris and whomever, what they say, the Hall of Divination, they are telling them that these are false pr prophecies. But it's like, okay, you guys are saying that just because it seems unlikely that Avalir will, fa will fall. Like, what's the I feel like your purpose is to tell us when bad things are going to happen. Why are you calling it false? I feel like now that Loris has taken over it, he he wants people to think that this is false. He wants, if he's actually working for Vespin or with him, whatever, he wants to push that narrative. He doesn't want anybody to know, of course. And at this point, I don't think um, Nidus wants people to panic. So he feels, I think he feels like the Ring of Brass can handle this. Um, the whole thing with Xerxes, I don't know what he's doing. I mean, I feel like the way the God was talking, it made it seem like you can sympathize in the fact that he's saying, what's the point of love and courage if you don't have hate, lies, and, you know, all these other things to kind of 
show you how those things actually really matter how good those things are when you have it um and then all the other gods kind of you know turn their back on him once he tried to make their creations better and then i mean is he trying to help this god come back he's he's basically saying that he wants the betrayer god to come to their realm and to remember that they are his creations as well you had a part of us being created so don't turn your back on us don't try to do what you did before and take your anger out on us but it's still like i mean he's telling you he's not lying to you that all the lies that's being fed to you is nothing with the gods it's the people around you which is <sighs> it seems like this it could be so many reasons why this happens it could be vespin it could be the tree of names it could be this betrayer god like what's going to bring avalir down is the big question like brendan said you guys all seem to have some kind of part something when whatever you guys are into one of these things is gonna bring calamity so yeah i'm so excited for the next episode um it seems like the dean has come she may have backup because they what he says i don't know i forgot what he said already but it seems like there's other people with her and we about to have a fight going on so yeah um really really fun really really horrible i don't know both at the same time i'll see you guys in the next one bye